Okay, this is the practice test, practice test 4A. And the first problem here says the teacher claims that the average grade point average at Potomac State is at most 2.0. Okay, so this is involving the mu, and since it's at most 2.0, that means it's saying that it's less than or equal to 2. Since there's an equal to with it, that would be your null hypothesis that mu is less than or equal to Two. And let me take the underline off of that. That would be your null hypothesis, making your alternate hypothesis, HA, that mu is greater than two. So that would be the setup of the hypothesis test. And now it says you sample 25 students, that's your N, we have a small sample, N is 25, and find that their average GPA, their X bar, is 2.1 with a standard deviation of 0.9. And it says to use an alpha level of 0.05. So we'll go to the Excel sheet. It's a hypothesis test for a mean, so we'll go to the one mu sheet. And let me go to the top of this sheet. And this is a right tailed test. So right here, we want and put in our alpha level of 0.05, our claim mean of 2, x bar of 2.1, standard deviation of 0.9, and our sample size is 25. We get our test statistic, critical value, p value, and our decision right here. So we do not reject the null hypothesis on this problem, and that means at the 0.05 alpha level, I was unable to show that the average grade point average at Potomac State is significantly greater than 2, since we did not reject the null hypothesis. On uh, part B, it says run this at the 0.1 alpha level. So all we need to do on part B is change this to 0.1, and it doesn't change anything. We still do not reject the null hypothesis. So since we don't reject it at the 0.1 alpha level, moving on to part C, it says summarize it at the most significant alpha level. So at any alpha level, since 0.1 is the highest you would go, at any alpha level, you were unable to show that the average grade point average at Potomac State College is significantly greater than 2. And that would do part C. Part D says to do a 95% confidence interval. So we'll go down here to confidence intervals, put in 0.95, sample size 25, the X bar is 2.1, and the standard deviation is 0.9. You have your T-score, your standard error, which is your standard deviation divided by the square root of n, your margin of error, which is your standard error, um, times your T-score, and then finally you have your um, confidence interval here. So we would say that I'm 95% sure that the average grade point average at Potomac State College is somewhere between 1.73 and a 2.47. And I think that does every part for pr problem number one. And let's um, go on here. Problem number two says that Nancy heard a claim on CNN that 7% of cat owners buy their cat's Christmas presents. Nancy just doesn't believe this claim. In other words, she thinks it's not equal to 7%. So the null hypothesis would be that P equals 0.07 or 7%. And then your alternate hypothesis would be that P does not equal, and I'll have a hard time saying does not equal here on typing it, but it would be does not equal 0.07. So at this point it says uh, she samples 100 cat owners, that would be your N, 100 cat owners, and finds five of them, that's your number of successes, uh, do buy Christmas presents for their cats and says test this claim at the 0.01 alpha level. Well this is a hypothesis test for percentages so we'll go to the Excel sheet, go to the 1P sheet and at the top of this sheet this is a two-tailed test because it was just she doesn't believe it so it's a it's a not equal to was the alternate hypothesis and the alpha level we were supposed to test this at was 0.01 your claim proportion was 0.07, your number, your sample size was 100, and your number of successes was 5. That gives you a sample percentage by doing x over n of 5%, or 0.05. Your test statistic is negative 0.7, and 
your critical values are po positive and negative 2.578 and your p-value is 0.4331. Well, since your p-value is greater than your alpha level, you do not reject your null hypothesis. So you would say at the 0.01 alpha level, I was unable to show that the percentage of uh, cat owners that buy their cat's Christmas present was significantly different than 7%. You were unable to show that. On part B, it says check this with p-values. Well, again, since your p-value is greater than your alpha level, you do not reject the null hypothesis. On part C, it says change the alpha level to 0.05. And if you do that, it doesn't change anything because your p-value is still greater than your alpha level. How would you summarize it on a project? Well, even if you check the highest p, uh, alpha level of 0.1, then you still do not reject the null hypothesis. So at any alpha level, you would be un unable to show that the percentage of cat owners that buy their cat's Christmas present was significantly different than 7%. On part E, it says to get a 99% confidence interval. We can do that right here, same sheet, just scroll down to confidence intervals, put in 0.99, 100, and 5. We have our z-score, sample percentage, standard error, margin of error, and here is my confidence interval right here. So we would say that I am 99% sure that the percentage of cat owners that buy their cats a Christmas present is between 0 to 10.6%. And the reason why it's zero is because you can't have a negative percentage of cat owners buy their cat's Christmas present. So the lowest it could really go is zero. So zero to 10.6%. Um, F says how many more cat owners would you have to sample to reduce your margin of error down to 1%. Our margin of error right now is about 5.5%, 5.6%, 0.056 is what our margin of error is now. Well, this is a sample size question. So what we do is go down to sample size, put in our confidence level, which is 99%. Our margin of error, it was told how many, it, the question was how many more do you need to sample to get your margin of error down to 1%. So your margin of error is 1%. And your estimate for p hat right here is your estimate sample proportion right here, 0.05. So that's what you would put in there because your p hat is x over n your number of successes over the number of people that you sample, and 5 out of 100 is 0 0.05. You'll get a total number of people that need a sample of 3,152, but the question was how many more people do you need to sample, and you already sampled 100, so subtract the 100 off of the 3,152, and you get 3,052 more people would need sample. Now part G says if there was no previous assessment. Well, if there's no previous assessment, you can delete this, and it means that you would need to sample 16,588 total. Part H says get a, uh, how would you get your sample in some sort of systemized, uh, stratified method? And let's go ahead and get to that here. Right here. Some sort of systematic stratified sample. And there you want to use some system where maybe you have, um, um, lists of di at different veterinarians offices of, of cat owners and you pick every fifth person from the list or f uh, use a random number generator to pick uh, uh, to ch pick what person you're going to choose from the list and stratified means you might separate your population into non-overlapping groups by perhaps uh, sampling uh, uh, cat owners that are in different uh, locations of a county or uh, that take their cat to different um, veterinarians. So let's go ahead to um, 3A and on problem 3 it says a claim is made that the average amount of calories in a male's diet per day is 1500. You don't believe this claim. Well that would make the null hypothesis that mu, since we're dealing with averages, equals 1500. The alternate hypothesis would just be that mu does not equal 1500. So this would be a two-tailed test. You sample 100 males, so that's your n, and you find their average calorie intake to be 1550 with a standard deviation of 200 calories, and it says test this claim at the 0.05 alpha level. So what we'll do here is go back to the one mu sheet since it's dealing with averages, and let's go up to the top, and this is a two-tailed test so what we'll need to do is put our uh, information in here and the alpha level 
on this particular problem was I believe 0 0.05 we can double check that in a second uh, the mu claim mean was 1500 the x bar was 1550 and the standard deviation was 200 and let's double check and see what the alpha level was in the n and on this problem the n was 100 and the alpha level was 0.05 okay okay so 100 was the sample size and the alpha was 0.05 well at this point we get a reject the null hypothesis here's your test statistic two critical values and your p-value and since your p-value is less than your alpha level you reject the null hypothesis also anytime your test statistics falls into your rejection regions in other words if it's greater than your positive 1.96 or less than negative 1.96 we would reject the null hypothesis because down on this picture here our test statistic of 2.5 falls right here into that rejection region right there and we could see that better probably if we started at let's say zero because we can see the right hand side there a little bit better in fact let's start a little bit farther up like at uh, one and now you can see that test statistic falling into that rejection region so we do reject the null hypothesis at the point 0.05 alpha level and we would say at the point 0.05 alpha level I was able to show that the average calorie intake for males uh, per day is significantly greater than 1500 now this was a two-tailed test you might say well why is don't well, how do you know that it's significantly greater and the reason I know it's significantly greater is because first of all it's rejected null hypothesis and also my test statistic rejected it on the upper side my X bar is greater than my mu and it's significantly greater because I rejected the null hypothesis and again I rejected it on the upper side so that's why I can say that it's significantly greater than 1500 okay on part B it says uh, run this with p-values and again since your p-value 0.0141 is less than 0.05 that's why I re reject it on part C it says run the same test at a 0.01 alpha level and if you do that you get do not reject the null hypothesis because my p-value is not less than my alpha level so um, on part D it says what, how would you summarize, summarize it on a project or summarize it at the most significant alpha level and the most significant alpha level would actually be 0.05 because that's the lowest alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis. On part E, it wants you to get a 95% confidence interval. So let's go down here and do that. The confidence uh, level is 0.95. The N was 100. The X bar was 1550. And the standard deviation was 200 we get all of our information here and here's my confidence level and I could say I am 95 percent sure that the average calorie intake for males per day is between 1510 and 1589 calories per day and that would be my 95 percent confidence interval um, on problem uh, let's see where we are here so let's go through these actually it wasn't a confidence interval in problem 3e problem 3e is actually a sample size question so uh, at least we have the confidence interval done if, if that would come up but on 3e it says using the information from 3a how many more males would have to be surveyed to be 95 percent sure your estimate is within 10 calories so really this is a sample size determination for mu so we want to go to that uh, mu one mu uh, Excel sheet. I'm waiting for it to get there. There we go. And scroll down to sample sizes and we'll put in our conf confidence level here which was 0.95. Uh, our margin of error was told to be within 10 calories. So your margin of error is 10 and your sample standard deviation is 200. So you get a total of 1537. Well remember we already sampled 100 males to begin with so the, how many more you would need to sample will subtract the 100 off and you get 1437. Part F says to um, estimate the standard deviation. 
given that the high intake for males is 3,000 calories and the low is 1,000 calories, estimate the standard deviation. This is using an approximation for the standard deviation where you take the range divided by 4. It doesn't give you exactly the standard deviation, but it, sometimes that's all you have to go by. So the range, 3,000 minus 1,000 is 2,000, and 2,000 divided by 4 would be 500. So your estimate for your standard deviation would be 500. On G, it says use your answer to 3F, this one, to determine how many males you would need to sample to be within 10 calories of the true average with a 95% confidence interval. So this is a sample size question again, and the only thing that changes is now we're putting in the standard deviation of 500. And we're assuming that we don't have a previous estimate, so it would take a total of 9,604 males to be sampled. And really that's everything on the practice test.